Okay, let's run through this setup. I will describe it as best I can so we can all follow what's going on. This is a continuation of our LENR project um, Cold Fusion, if you want to call it that. I haven't started glowing green yet, so that's probably a good start. Okay, of course, our power board with our on and off switch. Our watt meter, in this case, I only have one decimal point on our kilowatt hour reading. So we will be switching the system off as soon as that switches to 0.1. Um, of course, we will, we will reset it once we start the test. Okay, I don't have a one to one isolation transformer, so what I've done here, I've simply got a 240 volt to 12 volt transformer. It's actually a multi tap transformer, but we are on the 12 volt and 0 volt with our scope. The 240 volt side is simply hooked in parallel to our 240 volt inlet to our full wave bridge rectifier. So, looking at the scope uh, in the last test, the AC wave was not very nice. It was rather choppy, had high voltage spikes through it, um, which means our watt meter may not have been reading correctly. We have remedied this problem by adding some caps. I've added 1150 microfarads of capacitance across the rectifier and that smoothed it out quite nicely. Okay, our cathode has been changed from our tungsten rod to an iridium cathode. Now, where do we get iridium from? Reasonably cheap. Well, I'm going to tell you. You're either going to get iridium or you're going to get platinum. You go down to your local diesel service centre and you get yourself some old glow plugs which will look like this. This tip here is either going to be iridium or platinum. And all they do with their old ones is throw them straight in the bin. So go down to your local diesel service centre and see if they can keep the old glow plugs for you and you'll have yourself a very nice source of iridium or platinum probes that you could use for the cathode and I'm also going to try one on the anode side so we'll just have two of these instead of the stainless steel mesh we are using so there you go very cheap source for iridium or platinum um, of course you'll have to work out yourself which one you've got if you google the uh, brand of the glow plug they will probably tell you what this um, the glowing part of the glow plug is made of. But uh, as you would know, they put up with a lot of heat over a long period of time. So uh, that's what we've uh, switched over to because the um, other probe I was using was disappearing quite fast. Okay, uh, we have our voltmeter across our full wave bridge rectifier. Now, before we start the test, I believe there is one thing we should also be taking into account. We're not going to take into account the hydrogen um, because it's very little. Although there is some and you would get some energy return from the hydrogen, it would not be very much at all. One other thing before we go any further, this transformer draws 4.6 watts unloaded. Uh, so not really worth taking into account unless you get right down to the nitty gritty. Our glass jar we are set on grams. 887 grams. So we will be also heating the 887 grams or most of it up to this white line 
which is our 1.5 litre mark. So um, maybe 600 grams of glass as well to the same temperature as the water. Whether we can take that into account or not, I don't know, but it's another volume and glass is a liquid. Very dense liquid, but it is a liquid, believe it or not. So uh, we will be heating that as well. Okay, here we have 1.5 litres of tap water. And um, if I can get the lid off, I could fill this up, I don't know exactly where 1.5 litres was, but it'd be close. 1 litre, 1 1.5 litres, measured with the wife's cooking measuring instrument. Okay, we're right on the money there. And we have a little bit left. So we're going to tip that in the box. Okay. So now we're going to place our probe in here. Yep. Alrighty. Now, in regards to thermometers, temperature reading instruments I have decided to go for the old mercury thermometer because I've seen the reaction fooling around with my camera a bit so I'm thinking it may interfere with a digital thermometer as well okay here you see the white line is 75 degrees and this top white line is 100 goes from 10 degrees up to 110. We need to lift the water temperature 56 degrees for 1.5 litres of water. You can see we are over 1.5 litres. We're about, to, well I'm not going to guess, maybe 1.65, 1.7 litres. This was actually chilled water out of the fridge. So we're going to be starting off at a low temperature. Now it looks like we have about 11 degrees. Spot on. 11 degrees Celsius or centigrade. Okay. <coughs> now we need to set a kilowatt to zero like that. So our kilowatts are set on zero. Our scope's ready to go. That's ready to go. And something interesting happens with this reaction. Well it did the last two runs. Um, but I wasn't using tap water, I was using our garden water from our garden water tank. So um, we'll see if we get the same reaction. But it got to a certain temperature and then this thing looked like it just lit up like a light bulb instantly. So we'll switch her on. Now the reason I've taken the thermometer out is we already know the starting temperature. Once we hit our point one here, we're going to switch it off. You will see the water get stirred very well when this uh, large reaction takes place. And um, so it will be well mixed and then we will take the temperature reading of the water when we have finished our run. Okay, now cold water draws a lot of current. 2045 watts at the moment. The reaction is starting to take place. As it does you will see our watts are going down. Because we're using chilled water, which is the only pure drinking water I had, I'm not sure if we're going to get up to the large reaction temperature. As you can see, although it looks like there's a lot of bubbles there, Thank you. 
300 watts, 1450. Our power factor is 63. our temp stick back in there and see what we come up with. As you can see it's spinning around stirred quite well. There's 50 degrees, 55, 60, 65 degrees. The light's a bit dull, but I'm sure you can see that. Sixty-six. There you go, 66 degrees. Dead on 66 degrees Celsius. Or about 1.6 litres of water. And I think our starting temp was... 11 degrees. So um, let's have a look. 66 minus 11. 55 degrees. About 1.6 litres of water. Um, and I'm guessing that is reading fairly correctly because our waveform was fairly neat and tidy. In fact, almost spot on. So um, I'll get this posted for you guys to check out and see what you think about that. But um, using that iridium as a probe or as a um, cathode, it's 
certainly made the difference. So um, now that's just plain tap water out of the fridge. Um, but it looks very terrible now, and I'm thinking that's coming from the rods I'm using. As you can see, they are shocking. Now they were shiny, but now they're terrible because it's actually um, galvanised threaded rod, so uh, we have to get some stainless and some distilled water and we'll give it another run. Until then.